Hello, so hopefully you guys can now see me and hear me. I've just had a, a little bit of a issue setting up our Facebook Facebook Live this morning. So I do apologize, I'll just pop this up a tiny little bit. So thank you for joining me this morning. Um, it is the 1st of December and we are running our first Facebook Live for a little while. Um, and the purpose of this one is, uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of people asking us about stretches. So we're running a 12 days of Christmas stretching program, um, which will basically mean Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday to Friday next week, and then Monday to Friday the following week, or Monday to Thursday. So whatever it works out is <laughs> 12. 12 days. Um, I think it might end on the 23rd, which is actually pretty good timing. Um, not intended timing, but um, hopefully pretty good timing. So um, if my maths is correct, I think it will. I think it will end on, I'm just turning my phones off so they don't go off and bleep, um, bleep at us while we're, we're on them. Anyway, so Stretching. Why, why do we stretch and why do we need to stretch? So if you're thinking of flexibility, um, flexibility just means how much range of movement that you have. So if I can lift my arm up to here, my shoulder's quite stiff. If I can lift my arm up here, then I've got more flexibility. Obviously, people like swimmers and gymnasts are going to be able to get their arms in all sorts of of places. Same with your hamstrings. If I'm actually on the bed and I can sit and I can get my hamstring here and I can sit up nice and tall, then my hamstrings are quite long. People can get their legs and their bodies down on their shins and they've obviously got good flexibility in the hamstrings. And then we've got other people who are sitting and they've got to sit way back here because they can't get enough stretch in their hamstrings at the back. And this all plays into <laughs> the topic of flexibility and what is flexibility. So flexibility is different things to different people. So for somebody who is very stiff and they've naturally been stiff all their lives, it just basically means that your connective tissue, so your collagen or your capsules of your joint or your tendons and your, your muscles are, and all basically that connective soft tissue just isn't as flexible as somebody else's. And we have the opposite extreme of those hypermobile people who you know, are all the bendy people. And it's still within normal, they're just on that end of normal. So if you're thinking about your normal bell curve, um, it's been a long time since I've done maths and analysis, but if you think about your normal bell curve, we're all sort of sitting somewhere in the middle. We've got people that are very, very stiff and they, you know, they're very rigid and they can't move. And then we've got people that are very, very probably floppy and you know they can bend and put themselves in pretzels. And the major difference between that tends to be the connective tissue. Um, and in terms of connective tissue, um, you're talking about you know, the collagen and um, the soft tissues around our faces. We get a little bit less collagen and we start hanging a little bit and looking a bit more wrinkled. And then also from a, a, a mobility point of view, if you're starting to think about the tendons around your body as we get older, the tendons and the tissues age as well. So as we get older, remembering that we're getting gray and remembering that we're getting wrinkles, the tissues underneath are getting older. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you are just getting stiff. It, it sort of means that there's also been a change and there's an aging process that goes on as well. Um, obviously when we're kids, we go running around and we're climbing trees and then you know we're doing all sorts of things on different um, equipment. If the kids are active these days, we have a lot of kids that you know that's their activity and they're just sitting on computer games all day. But for kids that do sport and do different things, obviously they've still got that mobility and flexibility as they're running around. So what happens is basically over time, same as the aging with their grey hair and wrinkles, 
the tissues inside get a little bit less pliable. So if you can imagine that our normal stretch is here to here, and we can normally get, you know, hands on the legs and we can normally straighten the leg out and then we get one day and it's like, oh, it doesn't move at all. That's when we sort of notice a change in flexibility. For me personally, which is when I started doing um, a switch to Pilates, is um, it was basically when we had young kids, the cupboards in our, we had to move all our cups and have them in the high cupboards over the fridge so that the kids didn't break them. And then one day it was like, oh, reach there what happened and what had happened was I'd become very very stiff and very very rounded and I couldn't actually reach up without bringing the back so it tends to be something that we just go well, hang on a minute I could do that and now I can't or you know we might have pruned the hedges or we might have you know, gone up a ladder or walked up something and, and now we can't do it because we just don't have that flexibility so how do we get it back um Good question. Uh, it tends to be, you have to work at it. Um, you're looking at the stiffness side of things. So there's two different components when we're looking at stretching and flexibility. And, and it's the joints themselves can get a little bit stiff. So if you're thinking stiffness and what have you, it's when we just don't have as much range. You know, we're trying to cross our legs and it's like that just feels awkward as opposed to being able to cross your legs fully. And, you know, we'll twist them like this instead of being able to sit properly and cross-legged. So what we're after is, is it stiffness in the joints? So that's part one. Do we actually have a stiffness that we need to address where it feels like a jointy type problem or, oh, the shoulder is stiff? Or is it flexibility in the soft tissues where our actual stretch of our soft tissues is, is different? So what we're going to be looking at is more the soft tissue component of it. So we're looking at the flexibility and the length in the tissues. Um, so what is flexibility? So let me grab a stretchy band because I forgot my stretchy band. It, it's generally <clears throat> a little bit easier for you guys to see with a bit of visual. If this is my hamstring, and my hamstring, if you're thinking about your hamstring, it attaches just at the top, so where your sit bone is, just above your sit bone, and attaches right down to the back of your leg. And this is my hamstring here to here. So if I sit on this here, in this position where it's bent, my hamstring is short. For me to stretch it out, I've got to gain length in my hamstring and make it longer. If I bend it, obviously it's there and the muscle contracts down, so the muscle gets shorter, and then I stretch it out and the muscle gets longer. That is basically what flexibility is. It's the ability for that muscle to be coming in and getting tighter, and then for that muscle to actually lengthen and get to here. Okay. Now, if I want that muscle to get to here, but that's all it's going to give me, I have to get length from somewhere. So I have to gain some extra stretch. So if I'm standing and I can just get to here, but I want to be able to get my fingers way down here so I can touch my toes, I'm going to need flexibility in not only my hamstrings, but also in my lower back. So if I just have my hamstrings and my back stay straight, I might get to here. If I need a little bit more bend, then I need to use my back. Same thing here, if I just use my back, I might get here, but then I need my hamstrings to also help so I can go a little bit further. So what we need to look at is how do we increase that flexibility? Um, and probably from a, from a realistic point of view, we're, we're sort of looking at what do you want to achieve? If you have somebody who is stiff and they're not able to move and their flexibility, so their muscles are tight, tight means a number of things. It could mean that there's just a tightness. So instead of the muscle doing this the way it should normally do, they might have a trigger point in the middle and that trigger point stops them moving. So when we tug on it this way, it hurts because that trigger point isn't active 
contraction of muscles and that's not moving very well. So we stretch this way and it goes, oh, that's pulling here. And then we stretch that way. So we've got that component here and we stretch and it's like, oh, that hurts and they, they're feeling the pull here. Or they do it the other way and they stretch that component and they can still feel it here. If we can feel a knot in that muscle, then what's happening is you're getting an area in that muscle that's overactive and that area in that muscle has caused a trigger point. So this is why people like the looseers and they like the foam roller or they like the spiky ball or a ball. You work on that section here, the muscle sort of goes, yep, I'm happy. And then it becomes nice and movable again and it can stretch whatever way you want it. Okay. Now, if you have a knot in it here, Got another knot in it here. Then you've got two areas in your muscle which are stopping you moving, and you can't move anywhere near as much. So even if I try and pull, I'm not going to have as much range. So my range is here. Okay. If I release the limbs out of it, then my flexibility will increase. Great demo today. Um, if I release a little bit of it more, then I get my full stretch. Back. Okay. So we are going to assume that you are not injured, that you don't have any trigger point issues, that your muscles are working and everything is hunky dory. They're just short. Okay. So tight might refer to the fact that you've got a couple of bits in them that are a little bit active and you need to release them. So that tight is they're just in cramp and they're in a bit of spasm. Okay. Short means you've lost length. So my hamstring here to here, it's short. It can't move anymore because I don't have a range. If it was tight, I could do a little bit of work and then I might get a little bit more range. But if it's short for the purposes of this little series, short means it's short. You need to lengthen it. All right? Now, what are the benefits of being more flexible? Well, A, your muscles work more efficiently. B, you're less likely to injure yourself. Um, C, as you're moving, you get more fluidity of movement. So your movements feel a little bit more fluid rather than a bit more staccato and you're a bit more jerky. Um, but the main benefit of flexibility is your muscles are working well, you're getting good blood flow, you're getting good circulation, you're less prone risk to injury, and obviously if you're flexible, it means that you're able to use your joints in the way that they're meant to be used. If you get stiff, we tend to overuse things because that bit doesn't move quite as well, so then you use something else to compensate. So similar to when I was telling you about me lifting my arm up to the cupboard, if my arm and my shoulder are good, I raise my arm up and I get into the cupboard and it was all fine. Now, because I was getting stiff, I was getting to here and then I would have to lean back. So then my back was getting sore, which over time I would go, oh, that's my back. But realizing it was because I'd lost the reach. So to get the reach, I was compensating through here. So, stretching wise, if you have short tissue and you want to stretch it, so my tissue is here and I want to get it here, we utilize the properties of this in the tissue, which is called like a quick effect. Okay. So imagine lots and lots of people in a, in a um, boat with oars. What happens is as we get tighter, we oar in and we pull in. We catch the next one and we pull in. So the muscle fibers get tighter. So we contract the muscle, they get tighter. As they let go again and they row out, we get less. And that's basically how the muscles work. They get short, they get tight. They get short, they get tight. A bit like a concertina. They come in and they come out. 
okay? When they are on their full out, and they're as long as they can get, we then need to do something to change that length, okay? That's when you're doing your stretch. So if I have my hands and I want to reach my knees, and my hamstrings let me do that, and I come back, and I do that, and I come back. I need to be stretching beyond my reach to lengthen my hamstring. And then I get more range, okay? So if I do it sitting down, and I'm gonna take my jacket off so you guys, it's a little bit freezing in the studio today, so we've been jammed up with, with so if I'm sitting and I want to get more range, if I can just get to my knee and that's it today, that's all I'm going to get. Okay? If I get a little bit of work and I stretch and I loosen up and I've done some warming up of my leg and my tissues are a little bit happy, so think about, think about dough or think about plasticine. When it's cold and it's, it's, it's very hard and it doesn't move very much and then when we get a bit of kneading together and we knead everything together and we work it a little bit more, then we can stretch it and we can pull it and we can move it. Same like a twig, if you pick up a stick or a twig in the summer, it bends and it moves very well and if you pick up a twig when it's cold, it just snaps. Very similar thing or analogy in the tissues. If the tissues are cold, we all struggle in and we don't want to do a lot, but if our tissues are warmed up, we can get a lot more mobility, okay? So if I've done some release, or I've done some rolling, or I've done some trigger point, and you know I've done a bit of what have you, then I might go, okay, my tissues are warm, so I'm now going to walk my fingers down my leg. I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to breathe out, and I'm going to try and walk my fingers down a little bit further. So I might get to here, okay? And I'm just going to hold there for 30 seconds. So if you want that prolonged stretch and that prolonged reaction, we need to hold it for at least 20 seconds. So we'll say 20 to 30, and I'm just going to hold there. And when I've done my 20, I can hold Then I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to stretch, and I've actually got lines on my pants today, so I'm going to use my lines. And I get to my first line here, and I go, yep, yeah. I'm going to breath out, and I can't go anymore, but that's it. And I'm going to hold that. I might choose, but I also want to have a little bit of stretch around my calf, so I'm going to hold that and add on a bit of calf stretch at the same time. And I'm going to hold that for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to relax. And then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to take a breath in, breathe out. And I might get to my second line on my car. So my second line on here. And hold. And I'm just trying to breathe and I'm just trying to make sure everything is nice and relaxed. When you're doing stretches, they should be to the point of stretch. They shouldn't be into pain. So you want to go to your point of stretch. You hold it, you might add in a calf if you're inclined and then you rest, okay? Once you've done about three or four, you've technically utilized the physiological changes in that tissue. So we've technically gone as far as that leg might let you go today, but you've got from your knee down to number one band, or you've got from here down to number two band, okay? Now, when you want to increase your mobility, you need to be stretching regularly. And I would suggest if you think about stretching on a daily basis. Okay. So we're going from here, and we get to here tomorrow. We started here today, and we went to line number two. Tomorrow, I might start a bit closer here. I won't get to line number two yet, but I might be closer than I was when I started yesterday. And I do my three stretches, and I hold each stretch for 30 seconds, and then I might have got to line, line number three. 
and then I hold and I've done my stretches. And day three, I might start on line number two and I might get round my ankle and I hold and I get back. So as long as we're doing something daily, we start here and we'll get an improvement and we'll come back another way. Next day, we stretch, we get an improvement. We might lose a little bit, but we won't start back up here, we'll be here. Breathe out the next day, we get down to here, we'll lose a little bit. And then we get down to here where we want to be over time. So if you want to improve your range and improve your stretches and your flexibility, you actually need to be doing something every day. Okay. If you are thinking, I'm just going to stretch twice a week before I walk, or I'm going to stretch before I exercise, and you exercise twice a week, maybe three times a week, you're going to find that you're just doing this. You get a bit of range, but you come back to square one. You stretch and you feel good, you come back to square one, because you're only maintaining what you've got. If you want to change what you've got and you want to improve your range, you need to be doing that over a period of time. Um, so if that makes sense, when we're talking flexibility or when we're talking stretches, you have to work out what you want to achieve. So most of us are stiff, most of us just want to okay, well, do a bit of stretching and we're going to move a bit and we're going to do this every day because we feel the joints are quite stiff because we don't, we don't like being static, static doesn't work. Um, we're not built to be static, we're built to move and life today is making us static. So, you know, we sit to work, we sit in cars, everything's become a little bit more enclosed. Some people can go and they sit at a desk all day and that's it. They might get up to go to the toilet or have coffee or go for lunch, but that's it. You know, eight hours a day, the majority of their time is static. And that means your joints bent are here, which means all those muscles aren't getting your normal stretch. You're not doing your normal, I'm doing this and I'm moving and I'm going into filing cupboards and I'm going to the printer and everything is here. Um, so unless you play sport or unless you're doing a job that's fairly active and it allows you to move, most of us are quite static and that means our flexibility becomes a problem. And we don't normally notice it until it's too late where we can't reach into the cupboard or we can climb into a tall car and now we can't do it. or you know, we go back to our summer sport and realise actually I can't bowl. I used to be able to bowl in cricket and now my shoulder hurts. Or I used to be able to swim in the ocean and now my shoulder hurts. Or, <coughs> you know, I could sit down on the beach on, on the floor and now I'm worried about getting back up again because my fit line is no good. So if you want to improve your flexibility and if you want to improve your stretch, you need to be stretching daily. Okay? If you are happy where you are and you don't want to be getting a great change in your flexibility, then what we need to do is just be stretching two or three times a week, but being aware that is not changing our range. All right? So if we can clear that up on day one, um, if you're thinking, I actually want to be doing something stretchy-wise that makes me more mobile, then stretch every day. Okay? You need to be doing something every day. That can be as simple as I'm doing a stretching program at work. Uh, every time I change my program, I'm going to arch my back. I'm going to do a little side to side. I'm going to use the arm of the chair and I'm going to rotate or I'm going to stretch and bend or sit forward in the chair and bend so that you get up and you move and you stretch out because hamstrings, hip flexors, being sad all day, they're things that are sadly a lot of people are now complaining of. If you want to improve your flexibility, you will have to work at it. So you will have to do something different to change it. So we'll go through the different types of stretches tomorrow. Um, I will do a little bit of a stretching um, with you at the end of this. But for tomorrow, we're going to go through the difference between static stretching 
dynamic stretching, ballistic stretching, um, just so you know the difference in the protocol and also the difference between what you should do pre-exercise and post-exercise. So, you know, from, um, I'm an ex-skater, so I used to roller skate in my youth. Um, and when we were training, it was, you know, we still do quite what we'd call quite an active warm-up. However, things have changed a little bit if you watch, you know, the footy players and the um, rugby players or the athletes or just basically sport people on TV, the professional sports people on TV, you'll notice that they don't sit there and do long stretches and holds. If they do, they're following that up with dynamic work. So then they're doing stuff that gets them ready for exercise. So generally, if you're doing that prolonged static hold and the prolonged static moving, they're ones you wouldn't do before exercise because it relaxes the muscle and it allows the muscles to stretch and elongate. And they're ones that I would probably say you look at doing not before exercise. Before exercise, you want your muscles active for you. You want your muscles to do stuff. So you'd be looking at a little bit more dynamic, dynamic work or work here or work where you're here and you're stretching and you're getting a little bit more dynamic stuff going. So not only is your muscle stretching, but it's stretching in what we call an eccentric stretch. It's working into length. So we're using the work into length and the muscle is active. So if we go a bit far, it's going to work to contract you. Where when we're doing the relaxation stretches, which might work a little bit more better for your pathway stretches, they're ones that you really don't want to be doing exercise afterwards unless you've done some training to prep it. Okay. So we'll talk a bit more about that tomorrow. There's also different um, different types of dynamic stretching like PNF, where is your hold relax or contract relax, which is very good for improving range. Um, and you can do that through self. So those would be ones where you're holding it, you push down, and you pull, you press, and you pull, and you're using the muscle's ability to have a full contraction and then it relaxes more so you can get a bit more stretch. So it's, it's basically utilizing, again, the physiological changes in the muscle to make it contract hard and let go. So we'll go through in a little bit more depth the difference between passive stretching, um, active stretching, dynamic stretching, plyometrics, so you're sort of in sport, let's prep you into sport and what you need to be getting your body to do, plus some hold relax techniques. Um, contractual like techniques, which is again pressing against the resistance to make the muscle work hard. So a little bit of info for you for today, but let's finish um, with a little bit of a mini stretch program. So I'm going to assume that most of you are in the chair if you happen to be watching this or you're on the floor, and we are going to do stuff that would just help you move your body. I know what I've dropped, I've dropped my mic. So hopefully you can still hear me because I've just dropped my mic at some point during that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So if you are seated, I want you to get your bottom right back in the chair. Okay? Don't worry about your legs. Your legs can just sit nicely on the floor. And we're just going to do basically an upper body, arms, neck and shoulders, little stretch series. So for those of you who are off face, for those of you who are sitting, um, or even if you're just in the car and you think, you know, you're stuck in the traffic lights, you can do a little bit of tilting. So we're going to put your hands on the hips, or if you're comfortable and you know where your hips and your um, pelvis move, we're going to allow the pelvis to tip backwards. So we're going to come behind the sit bones, then we're going to come up to centre, and then we're going to come forward on the sit bones. So we're going to take it from centre, we're going to curl backwards and then we're going to curl forwards. Curl backwards and curl forwards. So we're just getting some activity and some movement through our spine. Okay? Then I want you to put your hands on the sides. And we're just going to move the weight side to side so you get an idea where your weight is in your pelvis. 
I want you to sit where your pelvis is even. And what I want you to do is just walk forwards in the chair and walk backwards in the chair. You can do that arms down, so if you've got enough mobility and you know what your body does, you can move it as long as we're not getting a lot of real sway side to side. But if you need your hands on the chair, just moving the hips forwards. Because also we want to make sure that our bodies can move. So now we've moved the pelvis in that forwards and back, and we've moved it a little bit side to side. What I want you to look at now is your lower back. So you're going to have your hands on your hips, your hands on your knees rather. You're going to take a breath in. Roll forward. You're going to take your hands as far down your legs as you feel you can towards your toes. And we're going to roll the hands back up to the shins, back up to centre. Okay. Now, <coughs> if any of you are osteoporotic or you're worried about your upper body, we don't want to crunch here. I want you to think about leaning forwards as if you're tipping from the pelvis. And then when you can't tip anymore, you try and lay the rest of you down, but you keep your upper body a little bit more upright. For those of you who aren't osteoporotic and you're not worried about the bone condition in your chest, do it as a curl. Okay. So now. Take a breath in, and we're using the tummy to help us come up. Now we're going to take two hands on one side, exactly the same. We're going to reach down towards the outside of that shin and now you might feel it across the shoulder so it's crossed over so if you're on your right leg you're going to feel it in your left shoulder if you're on your left leg you're going to feel it across your right shoulder you might also feel it across a little bit of your lower ribs as well so two hands down through the front we come up we're going to place one hand on top of the other and we're going to go down the outside of the thigh on that hand and come up. Swap sides over, go down the outside of that thigh and then come up. Okay. Now the spine also rotates. So what we want to do is use hands across our chest or you can have hands in genie arms and we're going to rotate to the side and stretch. Come back into centre. Rotate to the side, stretch, and come back into center. Now, if you've got arms on your chair, you can hold onto the underside of the chair, or you could hold onto the arm of the chair. So this time we cross and we hold the chair, or we hold the chair at the bottom, and we're going to use that to pull us and hold. I want you to take a breath in, breathe out. Around a little bit further. So you're going to feel that as a rotation in your chest. Coming back into center, swap sides, hold on to the arm of the chair, or we start genie arms or arms here, whatever works for you. And then from there, we're taking the arm down, or the arm on the armchair, whichever you prefer, and we can pull. Okay? Now, if I'm trying to pull this way, but my head is turned this way, I'm, I'm not going to get any further, okay? So what we need to be aware of is that when we're moving, our whole body needs to follow that move through. We can't have the body going one way and the head going the other. So if we're trying to turn this way, we want the body and the head to turn with us, okay? So if I'm turning to this side, breathe out. Take a breath in. Breathe out. Try and see how far behind you can look. So we're looking at 12 o'clock. When you're turning this way, how far can you get? Can you get to 4 o'clock or can you get beyond? When you're turning this way, how far can you get? Can you get to three, uh, 9 o'clock or 7 o'clock or beyond? Where is your range? Okay. 
So we've got lower tummy, we've got side to side, we've got curls, we've got rotation. Now the other thing that the body does is it bends. So we want to think about bending and stretching to the side. So we're going to take the hand, you can either have it on your thigh, you can bend onto that elbow and reach and stretch for those of you who are confined within the space, or you can have your arm on your desk, uh, armrest, and bend and stretch and come back. Same on this side, you have the arm on the leg, you're reaching across and come back. Now, your breathing. So when you think about your breathing pattern, if I'm breathing in and up, I'm expanding my lungs. So this lung and this breath is helping me. Okay. As I breathe out, it's letting me get a little bit more range because this air is falling out or this air is being squashed out. As I breathe in, I'm expanding. I can get a bit more range. So <laughs> if you're using your chair or your couch at home, you can slide the arm around and you can bend on your elbow and come up. Slide the arm down, bend on your elbow and come up. If you're at work or in an armchair, you just rest the arm on the chair or you rest the arm here or on your lap and stretch. Okay. And then one that most of our clients are familiar with is the combination of all those together. So it is looking at coming up into your stretch and then reaching down towards the gap between your arm and your leg and coming up and coming back. Same again on the other side, we're reaching up, we're rotating round between that gap. And that's our two or three stretches for our upper body. Okay. So hopefully you've enjoyed those. Just move your shoulders around a little bit because obviously you've got your head and your neck which sits on top of all that. And if you're nice and mobile down here, you want to get a little bit of mobility through here. So we're going to pop one hand behind the back. With the other hand, we're going to pop it on the side of the head of the arm behind the back and move the head away. Now, if I have my arm here and I move my head away, I'm not going to get much range and I'm likely to bring my shoulder in. So if we can anchor it by having the hand behind the back and stretch. And then same on the other side, hand behind the back and stretch. So shoulders. Head. Now, when you've got to your head here, you've got your stretch, I want you to look at sniffing under your armpit. So you then have gone through your scapular muscle at the back. Okay. Same on this side, we're going to come to the side, so that hand's going to be behind. And then we're going to sniff the armpit. So I start stretching the right scap muscle here. Now completely up to you if you then want to curl into it as well. But at the end of the day for here, the purpose is the side of the neck, which is your scalenes and your upper traps. And then we're going to change that to bring in your lobatus scalp, which is the muscle that touches onto your shoulder blade. And if you allow that arm to come up, you don't get that stretch. Hands behind the back, allow it to stay down. So you can sit on it. it doesn't make Different. The aim is to just keep our arms still. So, end of day one, um, a little bit longer for today than I uh, initially planned. Um, the aim is to just give you some ideas of, you know, if we, we do get asked a lot about stretching and what to do and how to do it and when to do it and when's the best time to do it. Um, and the long and short of that answer is why are you stretching? If you want to increase your range, you need to be doing it daily and you need to be doing something proactively that's going to address the area that you need stretching. Um, 
if you are just, you know what, I just feel a bit stiff and I just need a bit of oil, then think that our bodies are a massive percentage of water, but also the connective tissue and the collagen through our bodies, if that's not getting good hydration through it, so we're not drinking it, we are going to be stiff. If we're not moving and we're not stretching, we are going to be less flexible. Um, and if you're wanting to just move, then we just need to move. So we'll go through tomorrow, like I said, about static, dynamic, ballistic stretching, some more planetary stretching, which is a bit more sort of activity related. Um, and then also some differences, maybe we'll do, well, actually we might do cold relax on Friday so that we don't have these running too long through. So tomorrow we will tackle, so we've been lower to here, Tomorrow we will tackle the um, shoulders at the back, so stretches for biceps and different areas within the upper back, and maybe moving on to a little bit of hamstrings and seated. So this week all about how to stretch seated within your office space or within your computer enclosed space. So thanks for joining me. It has been a bit longer than planned. It's been about 45 minutes today. Um, I'll try and keep them to 20 minutes um also maybe half an hour from now on um on computer and if anyone has anything that you would like to learn a little bit more about then please feel free if you pop it on a comment at the end um, um or feel free to email it to me um, and we'll go from there thanks for being here